So we're the path Pandemic Pathfinding Group, and this is How to Survive the Zombie Apocalypse. I'm Lauren Williams. I'm Jason Jang. I'm Peter Machana. I'm Janine Zabera. I'm Karen Sue. Okay, so first we're going to start off with a little bit of background, then we'll show you our research and procedure. After that, we'll show you our Android app development, and then we'll give you a demo of our application, and then we'll show you the results. So a, our client approached us representing the United States government in a zombie apocalypse scenario, and the government can only go to five safe zones in the United States, which are five cities, and they will vaccinate the people which, within a hundred mile radius of each of those five cities. And the top ten most populated cities in the United States can't be included in those cities because they've already been overrun by zombies. So our objective is to develop an Android application to solve for and display information about the shortest five city route with the highest persons per mile ratio. And each of those five safe zones has to have a body of water and an international airport because you have to be able to get to and from the city safely. And then it also needs a hospital so that you can vaccinate the people there. So our Android application essentially solves what is known as the traveling salesman problem, which is one of the most well-known challenges in computer science and mathematics. Um, the classical version of the traveling salesman problem involves creating a route that eventually returns back to the initial starting point. But in our case, since we're dealing with the zombie apocalypse, uh, the returning distance is irrelevant to how many people are saved since once we reach a safe zone, everyone within a 100 mile radius will be automatically vaccinated. Uh, the traveling salesman problem becomes increasingly more difficult as the total number of cities increases simply because more routes need to be considered in order to find the most effective solution. Uh, one practical application of the traveling salesman problem could be found in like planning a rock concert tour throughout the United States where you need to visit multiple cities while saving the most amount of time and distance. Also, you could even find this type of problem in like, a supermarket where you need to shop for a list of uh, ingredients and you want to find the most effective way of making your purchases. So our app is being developed on the Android operating system which is commonly found on smartphones and tablets. Um, it's developed by Google as an open source platform, which means it's open to contributions from the developer community, and it's currently being run on over 900 million devices. It's developed using the Java programming language, which is one of the most common languages used worldwide. And uh, with the Android software development kit, we can add graphical user interface features without any difficulty. So when working with problems such as the traveling salesman problem, uh, two different types of engineers are usually involved first type is called systems and the second is software. Uh, the main difference between these two is that system engineers primarily focus on uh, setting the goals of the app and what the app will cover. Meanwhile, software engineers are responsible for taking all the planning that the systems come up with and turning it into a tangible product, which means testing, implementing code, and yeah. So this is called a use case diagram and it's part of the systems engineering process. Um, we actually built this diagram within the first few project meeting weeks simply because uh, it, it's like a drawing board, so it helps us plan out what the app will cover, the things that it will give to its users. Here we have five different types of users, such as the President of the United States or the media, and in the middle are the type of things that they would be interested in, such as the airports or the traveling time or the population or the shortest, shortest route. And so in order to find our five safe zones, we started by fulfilling each requirement that was needed by a safe zone. So every safe zone had to have an international airport, a major hospital. It had to have a navigable waterway, and it could not be one of the ten most populated cities in America. So we eliminated the ten most populated, and then we took a list of all, international, of all cities in the U.S. with an international <laughs> airport, and we were left with 52 cities. Then we went on Google Maps, we ensured that each city remaining out of the 52 was located near a navigable waterway. Some weren't, so they narrowed it down even further. Finally, we ensured that um, each city, each of the remaining cities had a major hospital. So all in all, we were left with 15 cities. So once we had those 15 cities, we had to narrow it further down to about five or eight because we had three backup cities. And we did this by taking these two maps and cross-referencing them. One is a population distribution map. 
and the other one enables the team to plot 100 mile radiuses around any city. So there you can see like Newark is the second circle there and the uh, area covered is this 100 mile radius. And so we took the two, found out the population in each of these circles for all 15 cities and then we took a closer look at some of the relationships between the cities and realized there were a lot of conflicts. For example, Baltimore, which is located between the Newark City uh, radius and the Washington DC radius, Baltimore is located in the middle, which means its radius would overlap with Newark's. Therefore, the population, the total population would actually be lower. So therefore, we included DC instead of Baltimore. Another one, if you could go to the next slide. So here at the bottom, you can see we included Pittsburgh into the final solution with 6.04 million. Ontario, California, which incorporates LA in its radius, actually has 16.88 million people. But because of the distance it would take to drive there, which was the preferred transportation method of our client, the ratio of population per mile would actually be lower if we included Ontario into the problem solution. So in the development process, we researched and considered three different algorithms or methods we would use to solve the traveling salesman problem. The first is brute force, which essentially takes all possible combinations of uh, paths between cities, finds their distances, and looks for the shortest distance. So that's the least efficient because, because you have to consider every combination. The next is the genetic algorithm, which uses random sets and combines them to create more efficient solutions until it finds the most efficient solution. The last is the recursive algorithm, which repeats itself until it finds the most efficient solution. Um, and so in the end, we went with the brute force method because it's the fastest and easiest to implement. And also, because we're not solving a problem with many cities, it's uh, not much slower than the other methods. And so a core part of our program is finding the distances between cities. So we have to use a mapping service to get this data. First, we use Google, which uh, provided the data we needed, but had a 2,500 request limit per day. And we found that in testing, we actually broke this limit. <laughs> so in practicality, that might not matter, but we want to be as flexible as possible for the user. So we considered MapQuest Next, which has no limit. Uh, it's a bit slower than Google, but that's a trade-off that we were willing to make. So when developing Android applications, the graphical user interface is actually a main component. It's the visual aspect, and it includes anything from icons, color schemes, layouts, backgrounds. And Google actually has its own preset uh, design kit, its GUI kit. And those include a lot of uh, the above listed, like the color schemes. But it also includes a lot of widgets, which are like buttons, loading screens. And those are a lot of things that we incorporated into our own applications, such as like you can see the images, you have the loading screen, the toggle button, the icon that you see before you open up the app, and just a button. And Google creates these uh, pre-designed kits so that, they're, so that any, any Android developer can access them and they can create a consistency between all Android apps which uh, gives all these applications uh, intuition for the user and therefore more marketability. When we were creating our own GUI, we had to decide on a theme. We picked optimism because our problem statement was to uh, save and vaccinate citizens, so we wanted so a positive theme. So if you look at the four images, uh, we picked the top left image as our background screen because it's more of a positive image, whereas the other three are more of a destructive theme. We began this, <laughs> we began this process by uh, starting with hand sketches. So basically, those five screens listed over there, we first sketched them out on paper and mapped them out which button would go to which screen and such and such. So you have the start screen, which leads to the menu screen, and then the menu screen leads to the other three screens, which are the add city screen, the city information screen, and then finally the solution screen. So now we will show you a brief demo of our actual application. So this is a live stream of what I have going on on the tablet down here. And if you see in the second to last row, second to the right, that's the icon for our app. And if I click that, we're brought to the title screen. Uh, both the icon and the title screen were kept simple um, to make the app very comfortable for the user. 
I can hit the start button and it'll bring me to the cities menu. This is where the app lists all the cities that it's considering in its calculations. So there are eight pre-programmed cities that we found through research. And each, next, each one of them is an information button. That allows the user to see all the pre-programmed information for that city. They can see the name, population, uh, what the hospital is, the navigable waterway, and the airport. If I go back to the city menu screen, you'll see at the bottom there's three text boxes that say click to add a new city. When you click this, you're brought to the new city screen, which allows the user to input a city of their own. So for example, I might want to add Atlanta, Georgia into the app's calculations, and so I could click on the name, type in Atlanta, Georgia, the population, and the hospital, water, or airport that I like. Um, the app actually doesn't need the last three in its calculations, so those would be optional. However, the app will warn you if you don't enter one of the parameters it needs, like the name or the population. Unfortunately, the app streaming software I'm using doesn't have uh, the keyboard to pop up, so I can't actually uh, demonstrate that functionality. But I can use the AP program cities. On the side, there are toggle buttons, which I can use to activate or deactivate a city. Essentially, what that means is that the app will consider the cities that are on and not the cities that are off. So, for example, if I know that Ontario has been run over by zombies, I can leave that one off and the app will try to calculate that in its solution. At the bottom, I can go ahead and hit the calculate button and it will start loading the distances. This uh, distance loading screen is uh, one of the pre programmed parts of the, of the uh, Android development and it will bring me to the solution screen which lists the order of the cities uh, which the app says is the best solution and then it will list the total number of people saved and the total distance. At the bottom I can click this button and it will bring me to the uh, Chrome browser and it will open up Google Maps with already plugged in the route that the app solved for. So when this loads I can click the map button at the top here and it will display to me the best route. And now I'll bring you back to the map. For the final route, the government will start at Boston, Massachusetts, then they'll travel to Newark, New Jersey, after that they'll go to Washington, D.C., and then they'll travel northwest to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Detroit, Michigan. This route is 967 miles, and it'll save 64,290,000 people. Okay. So if you wanted to add more cities to the calculations, it's possible, and the uh, runtime will uh, increase in a linear fashion. And say you wanted to add 11 cities, it'll take the, fi the five best out of that route. And it'll take anywhere from 25 to 40 seconds to load that 11 city route. And one of the cool things about our app is that you can leave and go like browse the internet or play a game or something and come back and the cities will have loaded. So you'll have your final loading uh, route calculated while you do something else. There are some improvements that could be made. One is a better algorithm that could accommodate for more cities. As of right now, you can have up to 11 cities, and you might want to have a better algorithm to accommodate for like 50 or something like that. Um, another improvement could be accounting for a possible die-off rate, which is more realistic in a zombie apocalypse scenario. More, uh, people are going to die as time goes on, so we could accommodate for that. And the last improvement would be the ability to toggle between driving and flying. As of right now, our route includes driving distance, but if you have access to an airplane, you could use the flying distance. So these are our sources. And we would like to thank our RTA, John Schaefer, for being such a great advisor and helping us through. Uh, we would like to thank the assistant director of Go School. John Patrick Antoine and the director of Go School, Eileen Rosen, for just uh, giving us advice and you know feedback. Uh, we would like to thank our mentors from Lockheed Martin. Uh, they were such a great team of people. Uh, they really taught us engineering skills and just helped us with any problems we came up with. And lastly, we would like to thank the sponsors of Governor's School of Engineering and Technology 2013 for making this opportunity possible.
think we have a few minutes for questions. If anyone has any. Yes. Uh, when you in add increase the number of cities being considered, why does the processing time increase linearly and not in some more exponential kind of way? So the algorithm we're using, again, is a brute force algorithm. And um, in theory, the time it takes to calculate that should increase exponentially. Um, so you see it increasing linearly. That's because the time that was measured in that graph is actually the entire time for it to load and calculate. The way that um, MapQuest returns it, it actually takes far longer to load the, just load the data for one city than to actually solve the traveling salesman problem. So if you increase the number of cities even further, you'd eventually see some kind of exponential increase. Um, but it's linear because the loading time of the cities masks the uh, exponential increase of the algorithm. Uh, there were three buttons to add another city. Well, it seemed like one would be enough. We just have three so that the user can input um, three more cities. They can have 11 so cities. So there is a limit on how many cities you can add. Yes, you can add. The app can handle 11 cities in, a, in under a minute in about 25, 30 seconds. Yes? Can we uh, download the app? <laughs> we don't have the developer license yet, but we'll get it, and it will be up on Google Play. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 we got to be quick. Right. Um, because if any supplies or um, military coordination needs to be done uh, using airplanes, then a nearby airport is definitely something that you want in a city that you're using as a rescue safe zone. Is that all the questions? Okay. Now we will. Does someone have? Okay. Now we'll move on to the next group. Um, so